life, love, and lipstick. Welcome to Life, Love, and Lipstick with Leslie Stewart and myself, Tracy Lynn. We have an exciting show ahead of us. Well, May Mm -hmm. is um, Asian Heritage Month. Yes, and it's a perfect opportunity for us to honor the Asian culture here in Canada in particular. So Mm -hmm. that's what this is geared around. And it it really is a really great time for us to kind of dig deeper into the Asian culture. Yes, and especially supporting women. And that is what our sisterhood is all about. And we have a new sister joining us on today's show. And as we said, it's, it's Asian Heritage Month. And the theme for this year, 2021, is recognition, resilience, and resolve. So let's welcome to the show Sheena Yap Chen, who is going to help us um, get better associated with Asian History Heritage Month. Uh, Sheena, welcome to the show. Hey, Tracy Lynn. Hey, Leslie. Thank you so Hi. much for having me and for um, you know bringing up this important topic and just celebrating Asian Heritage Month. Uh, for the past five years, it's been my mis- mission to elevate the voices of women, especially Asian women, because of the stereotypes we go through and especially what's been going on in our community in Canada and the United States with the rise of Asian hate crimes. Mm -hmm. It's really important for us to go out there and speak out, speak our voice, speak our truth, Mm -hmm. and just talk about what we go through. Um, I know racism doesn't only happen to us, but you know, the more we can talk about it, the more we can bring positive change, not only for our culture, but for other cultures that go through it as well. Absolutely. And, and, you know, as Tracy just alluded to, you are part of our sisterhood and we all are equal. And so we do need to talk about this. This is a great discussion and it's a perfect time right here in May. So uh, we know, we understand you, again, the empowerment of women, but you also apparently have an amazing podcast. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I have a now an award-winning podcast called The Tao of Self-Confidence, where I interview, thank you, where I interview (laughs) Asian women about their journey to self-confidence. And I interview Asian women from around the world. I've interviewed over 700 Asian women on this topic. And, you know, since I've started my podcast from five years ago, I've been able to get over a million downloads, which I never thought was possible to thank you. I mean I, I'm, I, I was happy to with a hundred, to be honest. I didn't know if right? anyone would listen to me, but I guess, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? And it's just important for me to share that because a lot of people think we can't do it, right? Especially as women, we always feel like we're not capable, mm-hmm. but really we're a lot more capable than we realize. It's how we, it's how we see ourselves that really stops us from going going for our greatness, right? And so this is why it's important to create shows like the podcast, to create books like the books I have behind me, you know, Asian Women Who Boss Up and International Women of Color Who Boss Up, because I've never seen books that highlight this this many Asian women on a cover of a book or this many women of color on a color of a book. And it's, you know, for me, representation is huge because growing up in Toronto, Canada in the early 90s, I never had any, you know, Asian female role models to look up to. And so part mm-hmm. of me was always ashamed of my culture. I thought I wasn't beautiful because I was Asian. You know, I said maybe I needed to be uh, a Caucasian woman just so that I could look beautiful. And so I didn't want our future and current generations to feel how I felt, right? I want them to be able to have role models to look up to, which I'm really grateful for, you know, especially especially when three women, you know, won won an Oscar, right? We have best best picture, best director, Director. best best supporting actress and best original song, right? And so what seeing, a year. <laughs> yeah, seeing that is just amazing. And that's what Asian Heritage Month is all about, celebrating the achievements of our Asian heritage because you know, as Asian culture, we're not meant we're not told to like go out there and like talk about our achievements, right? Um, mm-hmm. Like uh, from ourselves, you know, we're mostly we're usually told to never make any noise, you know, stay in the background and just do as you're told. And Whatever achievements you have, don't really brag about it because it doesn't look good. But we need to talk about this. We need to celebrate the things that we've done. We need to learn to speak up so we can create the change that we need, right? And you're still humble mm-hmm. by by. Your, your <laughs> oh yeah, up, right. Yeah, That's yeah. It. And I think just learning to not be humble and just keep sharing it, sharing what you're doing, right? I mean, I'm not sharing it to be like I'm the best person in the world. I'm just sharing it to show others what's possible, to show them that it's time for us to speak up, and especially with you know, the Asian hate crimes that's been going on. Toronto and Vancouver have the highest uh, cr- crimes uh, targeted towards Asians since the pandemic happened. Uh, I think we have the highest per capita in the world. You know, no way. I think so. Um, so it's really important for us to talk about this and 
it's it's sad because before nobody really had it on mainstream media because maybe maybe it wasn't newsworthy enough i don't know right but mm -hmm. now that you know it is slowly getting there it's going on mainstream media you know it's unfortunate it had to take a shooting in atlanta for people to wake up um it's still important work to go out there and keep talking about it you know i was literally on twitter and i just read how a 15 year old teen uh, Asian teenager just got called Ching Chong and getting beaten up by three other kids. Um, an Asian woman uh, also just got uh, hit in the face with a hammer. Uh, it's just, it's just horrific. This uh -huh. this type of violence and this type of racism. It's uncalled for, especially really? with our elderly community, right? I I mean, there's so many stories now where an elderly person gets beaten up every single day. And you know, mm -hmm. it's not only our Asian culture that's getting hurt now, because a lot of people think the Latinx community, you know, they, they can't tell if they're Latinx or Asian. So they get mistaken as Asian um, people all the time. And so like a couple of weeks ago, there was a report about a 70 year old Mexican woman who got beaten up in the bus because they thought she was Asian. And so that is just uncalled for. Like racism of any kind is just uncalled for. That's beating parents, right? That's what Yeah. And and beating up the elderly is just so cowardly. Like who oh, does that? I right? Know. Who right. does that? Like it it's it just it's so crazy that every single day this is the kind of news that we hear every single day, but it's also important for us to talk about the change that we're going through, you know. I see I do see more people speaking up. Of course, we would love to have more people speaking up. And I understand it's it's scary, right? It's scary mm -hmm. when you're trying to uh, do something for the greater good, right? And sometimes you feel like you're alone in this journey, but there's a lot of people out there doing the same thing. And the more we just keep speaking up, the more people will be in, you know be able to follow, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. for women, right? I think there was a report in the Canadian Women's Foundation or Forum, and they said that um, if a woman sees another woman in leadership roles, they're 86% more likely to you know, go their own path or take action in their own path or even take action in being in leadership. And that is, that is huge, right? Because I mean, if, if sometimes all it takes is one woman, right? A good example is the vice president of the United States, you know, first woman of color yeah. to be vice president of the United States. And, you know, there's probably a lot of many little girls out there who said, if Kamala Harris can do it, I can do it, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's finally someone that kind of looks like me and has the same similar culture that mm -hmm. makes me realize like, you know, whatever past I have, whatever limitations I think I have, I don't have them. It's all just in my head. And the moment I take action, I can do amazing things. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, it's just, you know, it's great that we did, we do have a month to celebrate all these things, but I mean, yes. we, you we guys don't... deserve a month. There's a lot of heritage and culture there. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. But that, that work isn't over just because once May is over, that doesn't mean like, we're still not going to speak up. We're still like this type of stuff happens every single day and we have to keep working on it mm -hmm. so that we can create the change. And it's not just for our Asian community. It's for all communities, right? Because I, I know not all of not, we're not the only ones who go through racism or prejudice prejudice or, you know, bias conversations based on what society sees us. Like we all go through similar things, but when we can work together, that's when we can create that positive impact to end racism, to end all these stereotyping so mm -hmm. that we can just live in peace and in harmony. Um, you know, people don't realize like these Asian hate crimes, you know, it's, it's bad enough, you know, the world is having this, um, the struggle with our mental health from the pandemic. So imagine right. having that struggle from the pandemic and going through racism, right? Now you have two things to worry about. Even here in Toronto, it's like the, the healthcare workers, right? They're being praised for, you know, helping, saving lives. But at the same time, like the Asian healthcare workers, they're going through through racism. So at one moment they're being praised, at the, the next moment they're being blamed. And it's not right. And especially with, you know, China's always being blamed for everything, right? And with what uh, former President Trump said, saying like, you know, China virus and Kung flu. And everyone thinks that all Asian people come from China, which is, which is really ignorant, right? Oh, <laughs> because, wow. So that's yeah. why every single Asian person gets targeted. And now not only Asian people get targeted, Latin people get targeted because they get mistaken as an Asian person. Oh, see, I so, didn't even know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, I mean, I've talked to so many people and one thing that some Latinx people tell me is that, you know, I get mistaken for Asian all the time. <laughs> and so it's not just us being hurt now, it's another culture being hurt because of this, you know, notion, this ignorant notion that we, we all come from the same thing. When Asia is a, the biggest continent in the world, there's like so many different cultures. I mean, it's, oh. 
so much variety, so much diversity within one continent that, you know, we have to keep bringing these things up, right? Mm -hmm. And even some of the things we go through, like, you know, our past, past people who migrated here from like in history, right? Nobody talks about what happened during our time here, right? Nobody talks about things like the Chinese Exclusion Act or, you know, Chinese people were brought to Canada to build the railroads for mm -hmm. half the wages of other people. Yeah. I mean, nothing is more racist than being barred from a country based on your color, based on your cultural background. No, and, yeah. and, and so this isn't even talked about in history books. Like uh, when I went to school here, I never heard about that. I mean, I only heard about that through other people. And I was like appalled. I'm like, there was an actual thing called the Chinese Exclusion Act. It's like, it's crazy. And so because we don't talk about these things. People think we don't go through racism, but we go through it all the time. And now it's heightened even more because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And, you know, first off, I want to say thank you very much for coming on our podcast and educating us, making us more aware of what is going on. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you are such a beautiful soul, not only on the inside, but on the outside oh, and on every you. level. And we do appreciate you taking the time today. You, um, one of the statements that you say is that you help Asian women break out of their shell so that they can live their authentic life and thrive. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because I know it goes on with your, it, it goes hand in hand with your books, which we will put all the information so that people can purchase your book yeah. and, uh, and boss it, up. Thank you. Well, it really started with my podcast. I really just had a passion to help women, especially Asian women, just because of like, I, it was something that little me had, or like my childhood me wanted, you know, <laughs> something right, that I could model someone to look up to. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. And so I started just, you know, sharing stories of Asian women, what they're able to, what some of the things they went through, some of the issues they had being able to overcome all these crazy obstacles from bankruptcy to, to jail, to cancer, to domestic abuse. It just shows people what's possible and it humanizes us, right? Makes us relatable because, you know, we're all human, right? We all go through different things. We all th go through different challenges. Mm -hmm. And the more we can talk about these things, the more we can say, you know, it's all part of the process, right? Like mm. we're going to go through some rough stuff. I mean, we're going through a huge rough patch with this pandemic alone. Right. And so being able to learn that we can come out of it is really inspiring. Right. Can you imagine like I've been able to interview so many women, like a woman who can fly a plane with her feet because she was born with no arms. Um, oh. Another woman who was a drug addict, uh, sold drugs, went to jail for three years. Now is a successful coach. Um, mm. Just sharing those kinds of things is really yeah. inspirational because it's like, they were in the roughest or lowest points of their life, but they were able to come out of it. And, you know, it started with that. And then it started, then it started kind of like uh, a domino effect, you know, being able to speak uh, on stage or doing workshops and also uh, coaching, helping them kind of break free from it, whether it's trying to figure out some of the things they had as a kid, you know, the, the traumas that we go through, because some people don't realize our traumas really stops us from doing yeah. certain things, right? Like, yes. you know, I always tell people when in the Philippines, I, uh, I failed kindergarten from coloring outside the lines. And so, hmm. For the longest time, I thought it was just a huge failure. But if I saw that in a different way, just like knowing that I was never meant to color within the lines, I was always meant to, you know, go out of the box, go out of the shell, color outside the lines. You know, I was never meant to walk the path that I was told to walk, right? It would have made a huge difference, but that's okay. Everything happens for a reason, right? Everything in our lives, it's either, a, you know, a lesson or um, something that we we won, right? It's yeah, a, right. a blessing or a blessing or a lesson. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. empowering that you say, like you, you learned later on in life that it was okay to color outside of the lines Yeah, uh, because you know, we all have that, um, mindset sometimes, like, especially as female where yeah. you have to accomplish this by this age, accomplish that by this age. And we do feel like failures. So I, I love that you're saying that you're, you're helping women boss up, own up and live their authentic life, which is very hard because like you said, there's a lot of barriers and stuff that hold us back because yeah. of our past stuff. And mm -hmm. as and as women, right, we're treated differently. We're seen differently. We go through so many biases. Just okay, just the fact that, you know, if you're labeled a difficult woman, you're con <laughs> that's a career killer. Nobody yeah. realizes how how negative that is on a woman, right? If a man was difficult, oh, that's okay. You know, he's it's just like a Taylor difficult Swift guy. Song. Taylor yeah. Swift song, she talks about the man, right? It's like yeah. that 
It, it would be different if she was a man. Yeah, it's it would totally be different, right? Like even as a woman going out there, trying to forge her own path, trying to be in business for herself, trying to promote herself out there, she's labeled as too ambitious, too aggressive, too much, too showy. But if a guy did it, he's courageous. He's a risk taker. He's a risk taker. He's very confident. And so it's either we need to eliminate these names or just, you know, embrace it. If like, if I'm, if I have to be aggressive to get my point across, then I will be right. Well, I think what's interesting with this whole thing too, is that before there were a lot of careers that women couldn't penetrate, right? We couldn't get in. And so men just looked at us, well, we don't have to worry about them, but now they have to worry about us because we are competing for the same role as them. And that goes, you know, for, um, in the media, there used to be male driven, you know, radio jocks were all male, um, even on TV. And then, you know, we were just joking about the anchor man a while ago, but there was something to be said about that. That's why. And that was just the seventies, you know, and of course in sports look at now, I mean, there's a female, probably a female representing almost every panel sideline reporters and now, you know, refs, officials and, and players. Yeah. So we are breaking, we are breaking through. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when you mentioned about jour- women in journalism, yeah, they still go through so much, right? Like, you know, um, not getting their stories heard out or even pitching a story and getting rejected all their time, or, you know, they have to do, they have to do certain things that's uncalled for, right? Like, you know, whether it's a sexual favor, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it, it still happens, right? And it's that's, and don't that's you just, dare get older. <laughs> exactly. So we still go through so much. And especially like, you know, as an Asian woman in media reporting all these Asian hate crimes, I mean, mm. the amount of threats they get is horrifying, right? But people don't know that because we don't talk about it and we need to talk about these things more. It's like, you know, we need to find a way to help them, to save them, to uh, help them, you know, stop these, these trolls from giving these stupid threats every single day. Right. Mm -hmm. Because now we're here speaking our minds. Maybe they're not used to it or they just think, Oh, you know, all Asian women are quiet and submissive and obedient. Like this is not the type of Asian woman you're supposed to be. And it's like, no, Asian women are multifaceted beings. We have many different traits, many different personalities. Some may be loud, some may not be loud, but that's the point. It's not showcasing one kind of person is showcasing Mm -hmm. multifaceted person and that's the only reason why i even started my podcast to showcase like look here's a here's an asian woman who can fly a plane with her feet here's another asian woman who can who loves to write and sing christmas songs for a living right here's another one who who trains romance novel writers in fitness like it can be as specific as you want or not or it can be something that you never thought was possible and it's just you know having um a voice for the voiceless being a representation for all these underrepresented groups and also showing them what's possible right it's all about showing them what's possible when we can show one person what's possible you never know the kind of impact they would make what and, would um sorry what would be your advice to somebody who's watching maybe it's educational who really kind of keeps a blind eye to all of this and and doesn't know that this is actually happening i mean you've opened my eyes up i didn't know some of the stuff that you had mentioned and we are grateful that we are now feeling like we're educated about this but what about the person who's watching what's your advice to them i think you know start googling stuff right i mean social media is a great place to also check it out i mean now that you're watching this i mean i, I literally have a book called asian women who boss up or they can check out my podcast the tower of self-confidence i mean or even if they google something as simple as asian hosted podcasts or asian hosted mm-hmm. youtube shows whatever it is right it's i mean it's not hard to find it it's mm-hmm. just people just don't know about it or even helping us you know talk about these issues on mainstream media right it's not always easy for us to get on mainstream media maybe because we don't have that i don't know the 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 factor for them to get the ratings or to get the viewers right. but mm-hmm. you know to be in media it's it's about sharing that message, being able to tell them what's going on so we can create a better world. I mean, I mean, we live in Canada, right? Canada, especially Toronto. Toronto is like the most multicultural city in the world. And we're going through all these things. Like it's insane that we have to go all through all these things, all this Asian hate crimes. I mean, we get, now we're starting to get a little bit more paranoid. We have to ask our parents not to go outside or alone, which shouldn't oh. have to be the case, mm-hmm. right? Because no. that can happen to anyone's parents. That can happen to anybody's friend or aunt or grandmother, right? Mm-hmm. 
I even had, you know, uh, some of my friends who are Asian who want to buy a house, they have to make sure there's other Asian people in that neighborhood so that they're not going to be a target. And this is 2021. Like the fact that we have to go through this is insane. And especially in a country like Canada and then especially in a city like Toronto. Mm-hmm. So, well, Sheena, you were mentioning earlier about how, you know, how some things happen for a reason. In a way, as much as, you know, um, you know, obviously the, the sadness behind the deaths that have been associated with COVID and all the negativity around COVID, in some ways, the light has been shone on, you know, on racism, number one, African Americans, yeah. and of course, Asian culture now, um, but also on, you know, healthcare and, 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 and nursing homes and, and the, the elderly. I mean, that those problems were going on for so long too. And we didn't anything, no one talked about it. Right. So as yeah. you say, if we sit here and we talk through all of this in, in mental health and it all kind of ties and wraps into one and it forces us to communicate and have people like, like yourself on our show to have these conversations and maybe we can start to heal and learn, as you say, educate ourselves. It's yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. It, it really starts with, you know, self-awareness or awareness of the things that's happening. Of course, you know, I'm aware that other things happen. I mean, as women alone, we go through so much. We've pro- People don't even know this, you know, since February 2020 in Canada alone, women have lost their jobs 10 times more than men mm-hmm. since February of 2020. Can you, is, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like yeah. just it, before the lockdown. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and because of the pandemic, it's probably set us back a couple of generations. Now we have, it's like we took one step forward, two steps yes. back because mm-hmm. of the pandemic. And so it's really important for us to help one another, to work side by side, to find ways to lift each other up so we can have more women in leadership, more women in CEO roles, or mm-hmm. even having equal pay. <laughs> you know, we yeah. still, yeah. It's, what a concept. <laughs> like 87 cents to a dollar. What's the reason? What's the reason for that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and especially when you do lose your job, that was like right before the shutdown. If you're talking about February of 2020, yeah. mm-hmm. then we get into the pandemic and everything shut down. You've already talked about mental health, but a person loses their identity yeah, and their self-worth because you're like, well, who am I now? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't all want to just have, I mean, we've all had to kind of get more into being active at home, meaning mm-hmm. we're having to cook more, but then you're multitasking because you're trying to teach kids and you're trying to do everything. And there may be a situation, we've talked about this too, that domestic violence is on yeah. the yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And it's underreported too, for all we know, right? So, it Well, it seems a lot of times the media is just focusing on COVID and we're not really paying attention to all of the other issues out that are very heavy until mm-hmm. something explosive happens and then they're forced to talk about it, yeah. right? That's a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. I mean, you know, we were crying out for mainstream media to talk about the rise of Asian hate crimes, mm-hmm. especially, you know, maybe since about February of this year, it's just, it started just getting all these reports every single day, someone yeah. getting attacked, you know, someone getting spat on, someone getting beaten up, some get, someone getting pushed off the street. And we were crying for mainstream media to talk about us, talk about this issue, and no one paid attention. No one, you know, people just turned a blind eye. It had to take, mm-hmm. you know, a guy going to three different spas and started a shooting spree for people to wake up. Right. And uh-huh. so, and so, it's really important for us to just, you know, keep speaking up, keep speaking up, because this doesn't happen overnight, of course, right? I yeah. mean, this is a long road ahead. We still have a lot of work to do. But if we don't start, you know, it's never going to, nothing's ever going to happen. Like I, I was reading this report a couple of months ago from Reuters, and they said that at the rate we're going, gender parity is going to take 130 years to be achieved. And I don't think any of us wants to wait that long. No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wow, that that it, you you totally like blew my mind today with this conversation, mm-hmm. and we just want to make sure that you feel welcome to come back anytime on um, Life, yeah. Love, and Lipstick. You are part of our sisterhood. However, we can help. Let's get the message out there. In the meantime, we will be posting all your links so that people can purchase your books, get onto your podcast, follow you on all the social media. We really appreciate you taking the time and educating us for uh, not only just because May is is Asian Heritage Month, Mm -hmm. but you have opened our eyes and we really appreciate that you've taken this time because it goes beyond this month, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh my God. Thanks for having me. I had such a blast. Thanks again for, you know, allowing me to have the space to just, you know, speak. (laughs) Absolutely.
absolutely. Anytime. You're always welcomed here at Life, Love, and Lipstick at our podcast. And if you would like more information, you can follow us on all our social media platforms and we'll have Sheena's information as well. Well, everyone, I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Life, Love, and Lipstick.